All right, honey, for the haunt this year, we're gonna make some columns that are a little bit bigger than these. All right, we better get started now. So take note. <laughs> these are the columns for our new mausoleum. All right. This video is about columns and walls. Once we made a few props, like some tombstones and Halloween decorations, the second thing that we thought of doing that was we thought was so important was to build a fence. You gotta have a wall around the decorations so those pesky little trick-or-treaters don't go walking in there. Wouldn't want them tripping over cords and touching our stuff. Yeah. At least it was that way for us. I mean, I think we went straight to Home Depot and bought enough PVC to make a half mile pipe fence. And it really does complete a yard. It turns a, a bare grass yard into that creepy cemetery. And with that, with the project that we just got done finishing, we had to create a photo op of a small little cemetery. That meant that we definitely wanted some columns and some little pieces of wall popping out of the backdrop and some tombstones that people could pose around and hide under and stuff. We could have made any kind of designed columns and walls that we wanted to, but this particular client that we had actually had purchased a backdrop we thought it would be really cool to try to create columns that match that backdrop as much as possible to almost have it like it just came out of the backdrop the tough thing that we had was they had this thing packed up so there was no way we could get to it so we went online we found a picture of it i printed it out and i did the best guess i could for sizes and stuff like that and i didn't have any kind of measurement so the first thing we did is we drew it on a piece of paper and i i came up with a scale i think i used about four to five sheets of plywood normally i use three quarter but uh i went ahead and went with five eighths like on the tombstone that way i had enough wood thickness of wood to shoot it with a with a nail gun so once i got the scaled picture all drawn the first thing that i did was i laid a sheet of plywood down and i drew out one of my walls divided up the space and drew out my bricks went ahead and cut my side walls to build up the thickness and just kind of started to go off the picture like does this piece pop out and then i cut all my bricks and nailed the the bricks on there now you, i could have gotten fancy and made different thickness of bricks but I just went ahead and did all the same bricks and they were about eh, three quarter inch grout lines and I, my plan was I was just gonna stick mud in those grout lines. And those columns are done a lot like the way we did our haunt columns. I just basically cut uh, four pieces of plywood, nailed them together and then I put a top and bottom on there. On the bottom, I usually have the piece uh, up just a little bit so that when it's sitting on the ground, it rests on the edge of the plywood and it doesn't teeter on the bottom piece. There's two reasons why I made some removable doors on this. One is you can store stuff in there. You can put sandbags in there to weight them down so that they don't tip over. I cut some holes in the walls and on the edges of the column so that you could reach in there and put a 3 8 through bolts with some wing nuts and washers and that's what locked the wall to the columns real safely. Like the tombstones that we use 3 8 hardware to hold those doors on with some T-nuts on the back side and you just can, uh, can finger tighten them or use a tool to tighten those up. The mud that we use is that same old uh, mortar that we've used in the past for so many of our other projects. It's flex bond. Mix it up to a very thick cake battery type mix and I think I just put on a thick rubber glove and just smeared the whole thing on by hand. The mud really helps uh, get rid of some of those knots and uh, plywood grains that you don't want to see on a concrete pillar. What I like about them is that they are kind of different and that, that made me excited to try to recreate these and build these things. To create the vertical strips going up the centers, we just used a uh, cut down two by six and then I chamfered the edges of them um, and then I cut some more uh, plywood bricks and put them around there. Now the plywood bricks on the, on the columns actually had a thicker grout line. I wanna say they were like closer to an inch. I just started creating different pop outs. I ripped down some scrap two by fours, two by sixes, plywood, that kind of thing to create different kinds of trim. And then I used lots of different router bits, flush trim bits, uh, chamfer bits, cove, round over. So if you have any of those routers or router bits, it's definitely cheaper to create your own little decorative edging and molding and trim than to go out and buy buy a piece from let's say Home Depot or Lowe's and then come home and chop it up. Because we were trying to match these columns as close as possible, I did break down and go buy some crown molding and then I just ripped down little pieces in the table saw and then used our router table and it really did save quite a bit of money. Because the columns in the 
picture we're not all aged and busted up and cracked up we did not do that like we have done in the past with some of our halloween ones so that was hard for me because i was like ooh, to make it spooky we got to make it falling apart these are like the nicest columns and the cleanest columns we've ever made are you sure this isn't for a brand new cemetery that ain't scary i also used about four one by three uh, pieces of pine and then about like three two by sixes to create some of our trim pieces so you can see the different kind of levels this is like a two by four with a cut down little square piece then you have some cove and then on top of that i used some one by three pine uh, flat going across the top and it's amazing how you can create lots of these different uh, details by just building pop outs i always use lots of wood glue I just cut a piece of plywood, add some 1 by 3 pine around the edges, and I used a cove bit to add that kind of detail. Stick it on top of there, get it down there like a little lid there, mm -hmm, like a Tupperware bowl, but not. <laughs> and then here's our piece of cut down crown molding. You can kind of see how that just really adds that finishing touch of detail to that. In the past, what I've done with these tops is I just carved a foam and then hard coat the foam. But again, because this was gonna get touched by people in the convention centers, I went with plywood. The cool thing is, is if you're gonna smear mortar all over this thing like I do on the plywood, you can have little cracks and, and gaps and stuff. And if you don't wanna show nobody, no one needs to know. You, you can get it all done and you can be stand back and go, <laughs> yeah, I am awesome. My AutoCAD and SketchUp skills and cutting skills are are just about as good as you can get. I got skills, cutting skills. Is if you're in a hurry though, like most of us are, you can just kind of bang it together and go, whoops, <laughs> slap it in there. I think as long as you're a quarter inch or less, which is, I would, I don't think I'd want to get much worse than that. Go ahead and just feel it right in. <laughs> no one will know. Besides, if anybody ever went into your haunt and actually pointed out your angles and their gaps and this stuff, I'd tell them, get off my yard. There's no trick-or-treat candy for you, you weirdo. So once the thin set mortar dried on the outside, just like the tombstones, Gina wanted to paint it in a way to where it really stood out and didn't blend in and get all dark with the backdrop. There's not a whole lot of lighting in the convention center unless you add lighting to it. And we knew that there was going to be lots of people going in and out of it with colorful costumes and stuff. And we just wanted to make sure that it just didn't get lost in there. So we decided to go with a like a marbly type of a lighter color like the moonlight was bouncing off of these things. So she mixed some off-whites to choose some tans and some grays to age it up and we wanted to add one last detail to kind of give it that overgrown old cemetery look by adding vines. So we went out and bought some vines. We painted those vines with a black primer satin espresso plastic spray paint. She stapled all the vines in place and uh, made it look really good. Gina's poison ivy. <laughs> Those are some nice dead looking vines you have there. Thanks, spray paint does wonders. So. Tuck that under that vine right there. Gina has the problem of where to put the last one. I told her she should just wear it as a necklace. She could have a little dead vine chain. There you go. You're like, I come with it. Ta-da! Mm, smells like spray paint. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time we ever wore something that smelled like spray paint. That's true. Remember those sunglasses or the glasses? Yeah. And it was and so it... funny, I had big old rings right here. <laughs> yeah, it wore off on, yeah, on your little funny. nose. <laughs> well, we're almost done. Um, boy, am I excited. Woohoo! Then you can load up the truck while I go play with Harrison. So that's just about it. I hope that that was kind of cool for you guys to see. A kind of a, an inside view of the way that we constructed those columns. I'm excited to make some columns in the future. I have a few different uh, design ideas that I want to try out. But I will always continue to probably make them out of plywood just because that's what I'm comfortable working with. The nice thing about these columns too is you can always add to them or 
add more columns and then more fence sections. Thing you can also uh, screw lights to them or mount things, props and that kind of thing. Since they're plywood, it's easy to just sink the screws in and out. And and not to mention, you can beat them up. You don't have to worry about them being all fragile and foam getting destroyed. I would just annihilate those things if they were made out of foam. I'd be like cramming them in storage and pulling them out going, oh geez, what happened? Thank you guys again for watching and we'll see you later.